Hello viewers, welcome to Simplified Maths class. In the last topic we had, which was Simon Taylor's equation, we were able to learn how to use the Kramer's rule method, which is the determinant method in solving Simon Taylor's equation. We also used the elimination method and the substitution methods, and we realized that which of, whichever method you use, the answers will still be the same. But there's this simultaneous equation you were not taught, which is harder simultaneous equation, one linear, one quadratic. But however, I can't teach you that right now until you know what quadratic equation is all about. Because harder simultaneous equation, one linear, one quadratic, combines both simultaneous equation and quadratic equation for solutions. So today, we'll go straight to quadratic equation. All right, now, a quadratic equation is an equation that is expressed in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, where a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. And as the highest power of the unknown x is raised to power two, it therefore means that you are expected to have two solutions to the quadratic equation. Those two solutions, those two values, are what we refer to as the roots of the quadratic equation. Now, understand that the roots of a quadratic equation are usually derived using four methods. One of the methods is what we call factorization method. Factorization method. The second method is what we call completing the square method. Completing the square method. The third method is what we call formula method. Formula method, which is the almighty formula. And then the fourth method is by the use of graph. So we call it graphical method. Graphical method. We'll take all these methods one by one. And so today we'll be going straight into factorization method. The most complex amongst them is completing the square method. But by the time I train you on it, you'll see how simple it can be. And I guess that's the reason why the completing the square method seems to be more challenging, but it's very simple to handle. In our series, completing the square method, which is part two of quadratic equation, I will show you how to handle that perfectly well. So today we'll be taking the factorization method. Now, Given the set of equation, or given the quadratic equation, x squared, um, let's say plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. If you're asked to find the root of this equation using factorization, factorization. Now, look at this. The coefficient of x squared is 1. The coefficient of x is 5, and the constant is 6. So the rule is for us to look for a set of two numbers such that when we add those two numbers together, we are going to have a positive 5. And then when we multiply those two numbers together, we are going to have a positive 6. There are only two sets of numbers or two sets of integers the whole world that will satisfy that condition. And they are only plus 2 and plus 3. Because if you take plus 2 plus 3, you will have 5, positive 5. And if you multiply them, you will have positive 6. So it therefore means that the two numbers that will satisfy that condition will be 2 and 3. So you're going to have x squared plus. So instead of writing 5x, we'll split the 5x into those two numbers, 2 and 3. So 5x will be 2x plus 3x. 5x will be 2x plus 3x. 2x plus 3x will give us back 5x. Then what do we have here? Plus 6 is equals to 0. So the next step now is to factor them out together. Here and here. You have two factors here, two factors. So you factor them out. So we have x squared plus 2x. x squared plus 2x, which will be done which will be factored out, and then we still have 3x plus 6, which will be factored out. So consider these two. You will realize that the only factor that is common between these two terms is x. It's the only factor that is common. So when we take out x, 
1 x will be left. x times x will give us back this x squared. Plus, now if we still check, we have already factored out x. What will be left here will only be 2. Why? x times 2 will give us back 2x. x times x will give us x squared. Then we'll consider these other two factors. So we'll factor out a common number. So if you look at the two here, there is x, there is no x here. So the only thing we can factor out is 3. So we'll take our positive 3 out. We'll open the bracket. Always know that this, this second bracket will still repeat here. So you can just copy this into this. So that will be x plus 2. In every factorization, it will be that way. The factors here, whatever you have in this bracket will be the same here. But if you need to confirm that 3 times x will give us back 3x, 3 times 2 will give us back the 6. So we are going to have x plus 3 as one of the factors, x plus 3, which is a factor out here, x plus 3. Why? Since the two brackets are the same, we'll take them as 1, x plus 2. All is equals to 0. So it therefore means that x plus 3 will be equals to 0. At the same time, x plus 2 will be equals to 0. Now, if x plus 3 is equals to 0, x will be equals to plus 3 crosses to be a negative 3. And if x plus 2 is equals to 0, x will be equals to 2 crosses to be what? A negative 2. Then it means that the roots of the equation are minus 3 or minus 2. Those are the roots of the quadratic equation. Minus 3 or minus 2. Take note of that. We can try another example. Um, another example. Let's take example two. Um, x squared, let's say, plus 2x minus 15. x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. We'll do the same thing we did last time. Now, we are looking for two numbers, two sets of numbers, such that when you add these two numbers together, you have a positive 2. But when you multiply the two numbers together, you have a negative 15. And the only two numbers that will satisfy that equation, that when you add them together, you have this. When you multiply, you have this. It's going to be uh, a negative 5 and 3. Yes, a negative 5. No, it's going to be a positive 5 and a negative 3. Those are the two numbers. Note, 5, if you add to negative 3, you have a positive 2. But if you multiply 5 by a negative 3, you have a negative 15. So those are the only two numbers the whole world that will satisfy that condition. So we'll bring them down. So we are going to have x squared. One of the numbers is 5. So that will be 5x. While the second number is a negative 3. Then before minus 15 is equal to 0. It means that the 2x has been split into these two numbers. 5x minus 3x will still give us back the 2x. Take note of that. So, which means we have not altered the original equation we have. So, we are now going to put these two together. So, that will be x squared plus 5x. And the other one, minus 3x minus 15 is equal to 0. So, we group these two. What is the factor common? x is common. So, we take out x. If you have taken out 1x, you have 1x left. Plus, if you have taken out this x, what do you have? You have only 5 left. So, x times x will give us back x squared. x times 5 will give us back the 5x. Now, if you look at this, x is not common, but minus 3 will be the only common factor. So we we'll we'll take out the minus 3, open a bracket, and repeat this, whatever is in the other bracket, x plus 5. It must always be the same. It must always be the same. Minus 3 times x will give us back minus 3x. And minus 3 times positive 5 will give us a negative 15. So if you look at it, we are going to have the factor outside, which we'll copy, which is x minus 3. While one of the two factors, which is x plus 5, one of these two brackets, is equals to 0. It means that if x minus 3 gives us 0, x will be equals to minus 3 crosses to be positive 3. And here, if x plus 5 is equals to 0, x will be equals to plus 5 crosses to be negative 5. Therefore, the roots of the equation are 3. Of minus 5. Those are the roots of the quadratic equation. And take note, even if you use the completing the square method, you still have this as a root. If you use the graphical method, you still have this as a root. If you use the almighty formula, you still have this as the root. So if you watch these two examples we've given, we have the coefficient of x squared to be 1. 1. The coefficient of x squared to be 1. 
let's take note of that. Now, the last example we have today is where the coefficient of x squared is greater than 1. So, where we have an example where the coefficient of x squared is greater than 1. Say, for instance, if you have 6x squared minus 7x. 6x squared minus 7x. 6x squared minus 7x, let's say, plus 2 is equal to 0. Consider the coefficient of x squared here. The coefficient of x squared is not 1 again, it's greater than 1 is 6. So in this situation, you take this 6 and times this 2. That gives you 12. Alright? Note that. So we are looking for two numbers such that their addition will give us minus 7. Why their multiplication will give us 12. When we add those two numbers, we'll have minus 7. When we multiply them, we'll have 12. The only numbers that will satisfy that condition... Uh, will be minus 5 and um, minus 5 and minus 2. Yes. No, no, no. Minus 5, minus 2. No, no, no. 7 and 5. Mm -hmm. Alright, so 6 times 2 is 12. So we're looking for two numbers such that when we add them together, we have minus 7. When we multiply, we'll have um, 12. 12. Okay. So 4 and 3. 4, 3. Alright. So, those are the two numbers that will satisfy the condition. Minus 4, minus 3 will give us minus 7. But minus 4 times minus 3 will give us back the positive 12 we are talking about. So, these are the two numbers that will satisfy the condition. We'll bring them in here. 6x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. It therefore means that minus 7x has been split into two numbers. Minus 4x minus 3x. Note that. So, minus 4x minus 3x will give us back minus 7x. The equation has not been altered. So, we take out two factors, 6x squared minus 4x. Then, the other two factors, minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So, we group these two factors together. You realize that 2 is a factor of 6 and 4. So, you take it out. And x also is a factor of this. So, you take 2x out. Open your bracket. So 6 divided by 2 will give me 3, and I still have 1x left. So that 2x times 3x will give us back 6x squared. Then minus 4 divided by 2 will give me 2. x divided by x is 1. So this is what you have. So 2x times minus 2 will give us minus 4x. Now, but if you look at this, the only factor that will go is a negative 1. Mm, negative 1 can go into them. And positive 1 can also go at the same time. So if you take out negative 1 out, you copy this bracket back. Like I said, the bracket will always be the same. They must always repeat equals to 0. Now let's confirm. Minus 1 times 3x will give us minus 3x. Minus 1 times minus 2 will give us a positive 2. So it's a must that whatever you have in this bracket will repeat in the second bracket. So you don't need to crack your brains. So at this junction, now you pick the factors that are out there. So you have 2x minus 1 in the bracket. All right? And then you now copy one of the two brackets. Which is the same. So you have 3x minus 2 equals to 0. Please take note. If 2x minus 1 is 0, 2x will be equals to minus 1 crosses to be positive 1. x will now be what? 1 divided by 2. The same thing. If 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, 3x alone will be equal to minus 2 crosses to be positive 2. x alone will now be positive 2 over what? 3. Therefore, the roots of the equation are half or all over 3. So please take note, anytime you have the coefficient of x squared being greater than 1, it therefore means that either 1 or 2 of the roots will be a fraction. Either one or two of the roots will be a fraction. Anytime you have the coefficient of x squared greater than one. Thank you very much for watching our series quadratic equation. When next we meet, we will not be dealing with the factorization method alone, but we'll go straight to completing the square method. I will, I would love you to subscribe to this video or to like the video if you enjoyed this our uh, math. Thank you very much for watching our channel. See you in the next. Quadratic Equations Part 2, Completing the Square Method. God bless you. Cheers.